Now, what's up? Start? Yeah. Okay. A clapper. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, thank you, Ron, for holding this event. Um, I want to just take a moment that, you know, anytime we gather in Miami, uh, we wanted to take a moment to recognize that we are on territories of the Miccosukee, Seminole, Tequesta, uh, Muscogo, and Taino territories. Um, and that we value their past, present, and future presence. Um, we also value their leadership in the care of these lands and waters and their related ecological communities. So we wanted to just say that before we begin. Um, and then I wanted to say that um, Claudio and I met in Chiapas on a, in a residency and um, part of what drew us both to that residency was our, our respect for traditional ecological knowledge. Um, and we went to the uh, residency to learn about contemporary ways of indigenous self-organizing as a form of empowerment and caring for land and water. Um, and we also went as a way to reflect on art as a way to um, engage with environmental, social, and existential issues. Um, so living communally for two weeks, we got to know each other very well, quickly. Um, and I'm so glad that we did. And, um, and through the years since then, we've, I've had the pleasure of getting to know Claudio and his work. And it's been an adventure and a great experience. And I was so honored to curate the show. Um, so in the process, we've had a number of really thoughtful and moving conversations. And uh, we hope to have one with you here tonight as well. So we will discuss a few topics and then we'll open it up for you. So if you have questions or other things that you want to discuss that we haven't brought up, we do welcome, welcome you to. Um, okay, I made a list in case I forget. <laughs> but we've talked about this and, you know. Um, okay, so. I'm going to start with the questions. <laughs> okay, okay. And Thank the, you, by the way, yeah. to come for being here. So one of the elements about your work, Claudio, that impacts me is the way that you are combining um, sculpture and film. So you've shared with me your history as a child and an adult. I'm going to move back. Um, making model airplanes and how this is an investigation of air. And you've also shared with me how film is an investigation of light and color. Um, so I wanted to just, you know, ask you to share, like, how did you start working with these two ways um, simultaneously? And also, like, what is it about the dialogue between these two that you like? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Well, yes, I started with model airplanes uh, as a very young, uh, around when I was seven or eight years old, and I start building with wood, um, very passionate about it, and every airplane that I made was teaching me something new, perhaps about the glue, perhaps about the wood, sandpaper, who knows what. But some, something. Every airplane took me further in the investigation of, of, of learning how to work with, uh, with these um, elements. And um, since then, I, I, I'm still interested in, in the concept of flying. Flying has been a deep passion of mine. I, I find that also going to film school, I, I learned the craft, but I, I didn't stop at, the, at learning just the traditional narratives that are uh, shown, that I taught at, 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 at the academy, at the different schools. I, I felt that, I, that what really interested me to me was camera, as an existential device. Um, cameras 
are very similar to eyes, to our eyes. And they amazingly capture and hold in memory what is being photographed. And I think there is a relationship between movement as far as model airplane flying and also um, movement in front of a camera. Um, it's almost, I think that the time machine has already, have been already invented, which is a camera. The time machine is, is, is with us. We can travel back in time when we see an image and we relate to it. Maybe it's something from our past and we can feel very much like we are there. And so it's a time traveling machine. And then we, we, we talk about time traveling having a lot of speed. And if you can go at the speed of light, you could perhaps travel in time. Um, so I don't know, they both very much related. And my investigation is uh, finding truth in the physical elements that I'm using to ex uh, exploring. Finding truth. Not so much science fiction. I'm not so interested in science fiction. But I am very interested in today's, I mean, if we, if we talk with, um, if we talk to somebody that from 100 years ago, and we tell about going to the moon and flying, maybe 150 years ago, let's say. 150, they couldn't believe that we can actually fly like birds, and we can actually um, photograph and have a phone that can communicate to another side of the, con the planet. So those are the things that really interest me. I don't know if I answered the question, though. We'll keep talking. That's great, yeah. Uh, well, speaking of birds, <laughs> which was a good segue, that, that's also something that I find very, um, I'm drawn to in your work, how you, you have birds, and you have birds like, I feel like you have a lot of respect for the birds. Um, and so I wanted to ask you about that. I think specifically you've shared with me that the, um, that like when you've been paragliding, the, the, you look at the vultures to understand the air how the, the thermal dynamics of the air. Um, and I thought that, I mean, I've watched the birds do that, but I've never, you know, been in a paraglider or done a paraglider to appreciate that you're learning from them. Um, and I also, so one of the things that you said to me a few days ago was that, that we're all flying, which was really very cool to me, thinking about that the earth is circling the sun. Um, so that we're all in flight. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are in a very long flight. Um, I mean, we, we are standing on Earth, and it seems very solid, but we're going really fast around the sun. One, and two, and three, and the years go by, and we're flying. And then um, also our breath, Breeding is almost like a, like a, a, a to me it's sort of like an aerodynamic effect. Breathe in, breathe out. And we connect to the present as we breathe. Breathe in, breathe out. And to me that's kind of a, also a form of flight because it's air going through the lungs. The lungs expand and then you know, and I feel like we're, it's, it's helping us to stay hovering in life, mm -hmm. hovering like a helicopter or like a, a hummingbird. Well, I, I mean, I'm hoping you could talk a little bit more about the birds. The, like bir your, the boulders, your, yes. Yeah, your appreciation and respect. Boulders, I have a deep appreciation for boulders, especially they have a lot of times, I mean, you hear people saying that boulders are disgusting because of the fact that they eat uh, dead animals and things like that. And they may be smelly. They are smelly, actually. They can smell bad. 
But I find that the, some other cultures actually think of boulders as a very spiritual beings that helps to move across plains. And uh, the T Tibetans, and I probably, I think the Incas too, right? Wasn't the Incas also, well, they, they have the condor, but also the boulders. Um, when, when I used to fly paragliding often, every day, paragliding is like a hang gliding that you launch yourself from a mountain and you fly very free like a bird. Um, we would look at the boulders to see where they're catching their thermals and how they go up. So we would follow them. And how they know that there is a thermal, we don't know. I think it's a mystery, and we, I mean, they're so good at it that it's almost like they can see it. But I think it's, it's beyond seeing it. It's, it's probably like a sixth sense, you know, that they have developed. And, um, and it's amazing. We, we would, you know, see a vulture going, and sometimes the vulture would even fail catching a thermal, I have to say, but very rarely, very rarely. And then another thing that I notice is they, they would also see our, our paragliders climbing sometimes, and they would jump from the tree and go follow <laughs> us. So we became friends. <laughs> the, you know, so cool. we, 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 we had a conversation going on, and it was very, very exciting, very exciting one, because as a pilot, we want to be able to catch the thermals and stay up as much as we can and go high below the clouds or even inside the clouds. And uh, that is an amazing sensation, yeah. And here, I mean, I'm watching this video now, one of the things you spoke about was that it's the transition from being on the ground and the gravity of being on the ground and then the aerodynamics of elevating and becoming air. Right. It is, it's, to me, it's still baffling how this animal, which is like a, like a small dog, probably is heavier than a chihuahua, and just by flapping his feathers, her wings, you know, can take off. Look at, if you can see now, look at, look at that body full of weight, but it's almost you know, is taking off. It's like a, like a flying dog, in a way. You know? <laughs> it's amazing. It's truly amazing. And they are, they are the masters of the air. They are. And every time I see vultures going around, catching thermals, in Miami, Miami they have a lot of vultures, especially in downtown. I don't know if you have noticed it. In the big buildings in downtown, they hang around there. Also, um, in the, the Jackson Hospital, they catch the, I noticed that they, they have an area where they probably collect the trash, I don't know, nearby, and so they get closer. But also, I'm thinking that the fans that they have in the floor the, for the construction can allow to ignite, ignite a thermal. I, I'm still not sure, but I, I have a feeling that that may be true. Um, so, you've talked a little bit about this, but um, early, earlier in our conversations you were talking with me about vessels and about how the sculptural forms, um, our bodies, eyes, our vessels. Um, and so, and you also talk about this transportation between states of being. So. I was hoping you could talk a little bit about the vessels as transporting us across states of being, um, like from unconscious to conscious or conscious to the imaginary. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I feel more connected to that thought and I can express it clearly. I'm going to try. Um, the, 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 the fact that we are vessels to me, you know, we carry life, and we carry, perhaps for those who believe, the spirit. We carry the spirit. 
and the body and the flesh is heavy. It has that weight. And we're flying around the universe, around the sun. But I find that what it, it's, I think film has gave me a tool, which is thinking of the flickering of the camera, tick, 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 24 frames per second. And it's happening, and especially dance films. Dance films, we're seeing movement being trapped in the, in the, in the camera obscura and being projected to her eyes now. And so the, the, when I see Roxana dancing um, or anybody that I am photographing, I can, I can see the motion, which is kind of different from just this, the, the, the weight I mean, when we're moving, we're engaging in a process that is you know, we're moving, we're engaging in a process that is not the death weight. It's we're putting it in motion, in kinetics. And so it feels like a flow, like the flow that can go on inside these vessels. The flow of air or the flow of sound or the flow of, in this case, as a lens, so of light. And, um, and I, I'm, 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 I don't have any doubt that we are a vessel, to me. We, we are a vessel. As a matter of fact, when we die, what happens? The heart starts beating. And then, of course, the oxygen uh, stops in the brain. But the process is a kinetic process. The heart is beating. And that kinetic um, um, on and off is what we call life. But what is happening between a heartbeat and the next heartbeat? Think about it. What's happening between a heartbeat and the next heartbeat? If, let's say my next heartbeat doesn't happen or, or it stops, then um, we consider that I'm, I'm just past, I pass, I die. So as long as it's beating, there's life. I don't know if it's making much sense. I think probably I deviate too much. That's okay. But, no, it's yeah. all related. I mean, I think, I mean, for me, one clear example of the vessel is like these, when you're on the paraglider, when you're paragliding, that moment when you're moving from ground to being in the air is a, I don't know if that's a state of consciousness that shifts, or uh, like maybe you could talk, you did talk a little bit about these and the idea of feeling lifted or feeling the heaviness of the gravity, but how the, how you're using vessels to help create different states of consciousness. This form, I've been working with it for maybe 12, 15 years, um, I, I, I was drawing at one point this sort of zeppelins, like a, um, um, in Spanish, dirigibles, zeppelins, and they have a, a, a flow of air inside that what's what made the difference between a normal zeppelin and what I was making. And you can see the drawings in the, in the, in the how do we call that stand? The shelf. On in the, the shelf, shelf yeah. In the shelf. And, um, but I, I realize that this form is also in the universe, not only in the expansion of the universe, but in the black holes. And I mean, it's like spirals. Spirals, we, we talk about spirals as a galaxies, why do we see that a lot of galaxies has that shape of spirals? Well, to me, a lot of things have this shape. This, this one and this one can go together and make one shape like this, like this, like an apple that has been bitten and you know, you see the, the end result. And, uh, 
I, I've been exploring it, and for some reason I'm fascinated by it. And I, I draw, I, 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 without even thinking, I, st I find myself drawing it, drawing it and exploring and making sculptures of this kind. And I also discovered one time the, the, the lampshades, <laughs> lampshades. When I discovered the lampshade, I was like, <laughs> it's a cheap way of having a very interesting object already made. And so I can use it. And I started using lampshades. Even the, the, the big light sculpture in the back in my studio, that one has a lampshade inside with the light bulbs. And um, think about lampshades, they oh, are amazing. This is one of the things I really respect about the way that you work, that you're following your intuition and you let yourself explore these ideas without judgment and without having to know what they are before you investigate them. Um, the shelf that Claudia was talking about is a shelf in the back that has drawings and also models. Some that are, you've had for 20 years? Yeah. <laughs> which I didn't realize until I saw the, the video. Um, so, yeah, there is an investigation that you, you honor in your work, and I think that's important um, to note. The, the last question I have before we open it up to everybody, um, you started, you touched on this some about how you see breathing as a form of flying, which I just was so amazed with, isn't that beautiful? And that we are engaging with air and flight every moment. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, you talked about the mystery of life and also uh, that we experience life in a kinetic way with the breath and the heart beating. Um, and uh, so I would, wanted to bring up another subject that, so Claudia and I both have experienced um, losses of our siblings through unexpected ways and they're very difficult losses. Um, but I, I feel like all of these things really do influence um, your investigation into these existential questions. And I thought maybe you could talk a little bit about some of this subtext um, in your investigations of flight and life and, you know, the gravity, like you just said, the gravity of death and uh, um, the aerodynamics. Um, yeah, well, I, I lost my brother who was two years older than me um, on year 91. It was an skydiving accident and um, that have make a big imprint in, in my work, in my life, in many ways. Um, it was a very sudden death happened in a flicker of a, of a, of a finger. Um, it's not like the kind of death that, you know, somebody is in the hospital and is dying of whatever, cancer or whatever it is, and it takes a while to, this was one, you know, one day he, we were talking and the next day he was not there, here with me. And so I think I'm, the existentialism in my work, I think it has a lot to do with figuring out things related to life and death. I wonder many times, where do we go after we die? Sometimes I feel like I have a, a grip on it and I feel strong with some sort of unexplainable logic, which is not logic, more of an abstraction, and I feel it. But some other times, I feel a little bit uh, lost, and and I keep searching. I keep searching, and it's not necessarily a searching religion. It's more a searching what can be tangible and maybe even explainable. And um, m one thing that I found is memory. Memory cameras. As, as again, is the ultimate memory machine. You know, we, we photograph something and then we can see later in time 
and go back to that moment like I did with my brother in the video that, you, that is being projected over there. There is a moment where he's driving on his car and, I, I, and he says, tiene pila, which means, does he have batteries? The camera. In those days, we didn't have phones with, with video. And those precious memories that I have of him, of those days in 91, where there were not cameras, but I had a better, better movie which was like a, you know, a big thing with the tape. Yeah. And, I, and I, I, I was making movies in those days before I went to film school. Um, to me, being able to see him talking on the screen, it feels so real, even though he's not here with us anymore. Um, I, it just make me think about, you know, these, these questions. Yeah. Yeah. And you investigated, you were doing your investigations with flight and aerodynamics with him. We were both very at, at, attached to, um, together in flight. Uh, yeah. And we, I kept flying after his death. Uh, I'm not a skydiver, though I have a skydive and I like it. I have to say it's amazing. But uh, I do paraglide. And I haven't done it in a long time until now in Peru when I went recently and I, met somebody that teaches paragliding. And after 25 years, I went back to it. And uh, it was amazing, you know. Yeah, I have to show you the video, you will love it. Being high, you know, again. And the paragliding has evolved quite a bit. It's not the same flying in a paragliding 20 years ago, 25 years ago, flying now. They are a lot more, uh, the performance is a lot better. Yeah, it's like. Did you feel that? Transcendence, the shifting of states. Of oh, I feel I feel so connected to my brother when I'm flying. Yeah. I do, and I, I I I embrace it. I don't I don't fear it, flying. I embrace it. I feel like uh, that's what I, he would want me to do to keep flying, not to stop because of death. You know, yeah. unfortunately he died, but uh, but I I. You know, I keep flying, so it's, it's a good thing. And there are many ways of flying, by the way. You can, if you like to try it, you can not only do paragliding, but you can do model airplanes. You can talk to me after and uh, I'll show you <laughs> what you can do to, to fly. Oh, the drones these days. Everyone is do, using a drone with a camera. I, I started putting cameras on helicopters before the drones. Huh. and remote control helicopters and, and we got amazing footage. Yeah. It was a bit shaky because we had problems with vibrations. Huh. But uh, nowadays you buy a camera, get a flying camera for about a thousand dollars or a little bit more and it's a 4K camera <coughs> that flies, that has a remote control, that has a screen that you can fly. I mean it's amazing. I, I find it amazing that you, you can actually buy for so little money something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, Claudio. Those are, those are all the questions that I have. So if you all have any questions or topics that you wanted to bring up to ask Claudio about, or, you know, please. Yes. Okay, I was interested in uh, these sculptures. Uh, why is the material? I think I said a hard plastic bag that you used to do. Why is the material? Why these colors? W what kind of material? Is it, uh, uh, this yeah. material you use this instead of the hard plastic that I see with some of the other ones. Why this material? And why these colors? The well, the colors. That's a good question. The colors. I said. I. I this is to me cold, and this is hot, mm -hmm. right? And so it's, it, it has to do with the the. Um, thermodynamics of a thermal, a thermal that is air that is being held in the ground and suddenly it has a shift and it becomes a column of air that goes up. Mm -hmm. And so I like to have that cold and, and hot kind of feeling to it. And uh, I, this was more of a yin yang thing to have one element of hot in the cold one and one element of cold in the hot one. But that's what he was talking about, like when he would make airplanes, model airplanes as a kid. It's similar, right? It's similar, similar technology. Yeah, it's similar technology. And the the ribs, yeah. 
like the one, the ribs that you see on a wing, um, are here present in these shapes. And then um, I use it also the knowledge in light, in film, in cinema light, in this because, and also in the more in the sculptures that you see in the back that are luminic. Um, I use the diffusion element, which is the white part that is inside, mm -hmm. and then the color that is outside. So when you shine inside light, light through the inside, um, you get, it's important to have the diffusion because that pops out the color. Uh, the, no, of yeah. Okay. And one thing I wanted to explain, Claudio, we had looked at having them both together, but then we talked about splitting them apart so that as a viewer, you come in and you kind of activate the space with these two elements and then seeing the vulture struggling to get up. I mean, struggling to, but I mean, very gracefully too, shifting from the gravity to the, to the flight. Um, so, yeah, so as a viewer, you're part of the dynamic when you're in the room. Um, also, you know, Claudio has a paraglider that I had never seen one before, and they have a similar structure like this, which is really amazing. It's, it's all cloth, but the structure is similar in terms of having these, did you call these baffles? Ribs. Oh, ribs, uh, okay, ribs. yeah, yeah. So that's one of the ways that it captures the air. Yeah. yeah. I love, again, about breathing and flight. Mm -hmm. and, and I see these as actions, as things that we are, that are you know, tangible, physical actions. You also talk about the thermals and the shapes. Um, and I, mean, I get the idea that somehow there's energy transfer in your artwork. That, that, that is, is there an intentional thing? And how do you, about that? And also, how do you feel while working with an object as a physical activity, making the art where, with the intention of doing of, of having that feeling that we are being lifted, or we're, or in your light, in your light or in your movie, that we're somehow participating in it. I, I I think that, as I mentioned earlier, the, every airplane that I built made me learn something new, and I was very invested in in what I was doing as far as you know flat, being able to. One of the things that I fascinated is the fact that having a remote control. Your, your muscles are connected to your brain. And the brain is thinking, thinking I want to go left or want to go right, up or down, whatever. And that communication is a dance. And um, um, to connect with what you were saying, let me see if I can uh, make that transition. Oh, the object. I don't use blueprints when I'm creating these objects. I do minimum drawings before. And then I start building, building, building. And I, that object, and I like it that way. I don't want to be very rational when I start. I want to let the flow drive me. And then when I create the piece, um, I, I, I learned something important. It touched me in a spiritual level. I, I grow with every little piece that I make. And I think that's true for most artists, or every artist, I think. I love what you said about the energy transfer, because that's, I mean, that's what's ha what the vultures are doing, right? But that's cool that that is a feeling from some of the work. I think that's, that's really, I appreciate you articulating that, yeah. Uh, I think one of the things that uh, um, Laurence and I discussed when we were building this uh, installation here in this gallery was having the, the black mirror in, in that area. And it was very important. At the beginning, I thought about putting in the ceiling the, a, a large black mirror. And 
um, because it's like, like a hole to the, it's like having a, it's like a camera gate, you know? The camera gate uh, that one can, it's a portal, basically. Cameras are portals. So that, that black mirror is a portal. And I wanted to have it here at one point, but then I decided it's gonna take away from all. So I thought it would be better to have it there. And Lorenz and I discussed it. And, and then the relationship between the bolters and the black mirror is also present. Um, and Betty, uh, a friend uh, of us, uh, when she came to see the exhibition, immediately got into that relationship. And I was so happy, I was like, <laughs> Jumping one leg, you're like, oh, we, we achieve it. <laughs> yeah, Claudia kept wanting, when people came to the show, to have the sensation of being lifted. I think. Uh, Jorge George. And Sebastian. Oh. Hi, you mentioned to me that you got that experience yeah. when you were looking at this piece, right? Yeah, I did. Like this moment of walking through a photo, transitioning into another space, just seeing it. Here you talk about. Thank you. Thank you. You had a uh, question? Thank you. Yeah, I had a question. Claudio, when you were flying in Peru, did you have a feeling that you, that you, the higher power was talking to you when you were flying? I feel high when I'm flying and I'm very connected to the nature. When I'm flying, I feel so close to true happiness. I feel so... It's hard to describe. Is have you ever flown in an air balloon? No, I want to do that. I want to do that. Okay, too. let's do it. I think you can do it in Homestead. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah? yeah. You done it? Yeah. Okay, tell me about it. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Anybody that wants to go fly with us, we can make an appointment. <laughs> okay, when well, I don't know. If anybody anybody else, else have something they want to ask or bring up? Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing everything about the personal story about your brother. And, um, when I first walked in, I think it's a to me, I think it felt very you know, mathematical. I look at this and I'm like, you know, this, this looks like it's really difficult to create. So when you explain everything about the air, right, the breath, um, you know, and then I think of this, you know, little boy that's making these, you know, planes and I see you now and you're still and, and when you told the story about your brother, it's it's almost like you're you're still breathing life into him, into his existence with, with this, because it's connecting back to your childhood. And I, see, I mean, this is, this is immediately what, what I felt and, and how, you know, when our breath stops, what happened, and just, just that, you know, that these are vessels and that you continue to explore that just on a larger scale. I think it's, it's beautiful and it's really spiritual. You know, I, I walked in going, oh, this is, you know, and, and you did say at one point um, it, it's based in, in, in reality, right? Like you want to find the truth, you want to find something that's logical in it, but it's also so spiritual and beautiful, and thank you for... Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that with Thank me. you so much. Yeah. Um, um, I um, wanted to say something um, about the vessels. I, Federico Fellini, a filmmaker that I admire a lot, an Italian filmmaker. Some of you may know who he is. He said that um, the artist channelize, or it's a medium that somehow connects with something. It's kind of the hard to explain, but for instance, he would say that about his musician. He's the people, the Nino uh, Rota, I believe was. Scores. It's the scores. When he would be on the piano, he said, oh, you are can channel, uh, is it, como se dice canalizar? Channelizing. Channeling. The, the music, you know, you're channeling. 
And I love that way of thinking. I think it's, it, it makes sense. It's like, I mean, the camera is flickering, but what is in front is the ca canalizing, um, channelizing that uh, movement. And I think uh, every, that's why every piece that I make is it's taking me somewhere else. It, it, it gives me an understanding of something. That's why I do it, to tell you the truth. I, don't, I, I, I like to impress people, but I love to <laughs> learn. <laughs> the meaning of the, the word inspiring or inspiration means in spirit. Oh. That's the meaning. It means in spirit. It's related. I didn't know that. It's related to what you say. Mm. Nice. Okay, well, I don't know what time is it. I don't know. I think. Uh, eight, ten minutes, nine minutes to eight. Oh, really? Okay. We have a few more minutes. If people, anybody has anything else, or we could just break and talk informally. We have wine and some seltzer. <laughs> I have a question. So, uh, you were talking how uh, the first stage is uh, making a new work. You don't do a lot of sketching. You might do a little bit, but then you start building. Um, how much of um, how much of your work is a logical process, and how much is intuition uh, further down the process? For these ones, I I start with a small model that you will see in the back that has several colors. And I start cutting pieces of balsa wood and repeating the pattern. And I decide I'm going to do 60. These are 16 around in the pie, in the pie. So 16, divide, you know, div division. And then I got a solid foundation there to launch my work. But I, um, but at some points I know that I had it to know. Like for instance, where am I going to help? hang this from? Where am I going to locate the, the strings? And it needs to be a solid, solid base that is attached to the frame of the, of the uh, sculpture. And those things, I did not have an idea how I was going to do it until I evolved and later on I figured it out. So it wasn't on paper. But he doesn't, so he doesn't make like blueprints. He doesn't plan everything. But you do do drawing that are investigative drawing, where yes. you keep making the same form. Yeah. And then at some point you decide to make the to further explore that form in three dimension, right? Yes. And as a matter of fact, if somebody people have asked me, I would like to make a. Can you make for me a spectrum collider, but smaller, so I can put it in my house? <laughs> the spectrum collider is a one vertical. And I say yes, but to tell you the truth, it's going to be tough because I don't have blueprints. I had to go again from zero, and, and I can do it. I mean, I have the model, you know, but it, it, I think every piece is very unique. I don't think there is, uh, it's not really an industrial way of doing things, which in a way would be great to have it because I could sell perhaps more. But. <laughs> So one of the pieces that Claudio has in his studio, the um, Flight of Colors, that one has a video, a TV, and then on the outside are like bands of color that f for me it looks like wings and relates to the paraglider, right? Yes. But that one, in that instance, the video and the sculpture, they're all in one piece. Whereas in this one, he separated those elements. So this was a big experiment for your work, I think, in terms of separating them and putting the elements in the same room but not having it all in one piece. I think it's interesting to see both as um, having the, both pieces inform each other. So you could go visit his studio if, you, if you're not familiar with the piece. That Flight of Colors was uh, part of uh, No Vacancy, which is a call that the city of Miami Beach did. Uh, and uh, they selected 12 artists this year. I think last year they select less, I'm not sure. But I was selected to have that piece in the hotel, in the Croydon Hotel. And there were several artists that 
put their pieces in different hotels in the city. It was a lot of fun. And we brought that piece to the hotel and the, it was nice to see the people taking pictures of themselves with the, with the, with the sculpture. It was awesome. Yeah. And watching the video, you know. That one also has light embedded in the piece, whereas these, you, we have external sources of light. External sources. And it's also interacting with the video light on the, on the membrane, right? Yeah. So. Um, Galio, I had a quick question. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the red strings? I think when we were installing, you mentioned that they're used in power gliders. I thought that would be interesting. These strings has whole many, many flights. These strings were the strings that are used in the paragliders to connect the canopy, the wing, with the pilot. And so they are made of Kevlar. They are really, really strong, and they want it to be very thin, so they don't create much resistance to the, to the flow when the, when the paraglider is flowing, flying forward. Um, and I'm, I'm, that paraglider was given to me by a very good friend of mine that, I, that we flew together many times in Venezuela, where I'm from. And, and it was a retired paraglider. It could not be used anymore because of uh, lifespan of uh, materials. Mm -hmm. uh, once the materials get you know, old, you, you, it was, it's a retired paraglider which I have, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I, I'm using the lines now. Yeah. And I love the fact that the lines are visible. I don't wanna hide the lines. I could have used nylon, but you mentioned also when we we're installing. Yeah, that I like using, I mean, I feel like that adds to the piece. It's not just pretending that you don't see the line, but it's adding an element that, and it's flown. So I feel like that brings an energy, speaking of the energy to the space. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you, you everybody so much. Sorry. Sorry. Are you going to say something? No, I, I just really want to wanna thank, thank you because you have been such an important part of everything that we have done here. Oh, and uh, it, it means a lot to me. And we met how many years ago? Five, six, Five? maybe? And, and we share a studio space. You invite me to be part of yeah, the studio yeah. at Manac Contemporary. And uh, that was awesome. That's where I, I made that piece in the back. So I have a lot of memories with my work and you. Yeah. And that's very meaningful. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. Right. Thanks. And thank you, Ron, too. Yeah, thank you. For making this yeah, happen. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, everybody. Great, Claudia. I'm glad you shared some of this. On top of food poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know I was going to be able to. Oh my God. Yeah, you did it. That was good. That was nice, huh? Good. <laughs>